Amen. You, what a mighty God we serve. Our Lord is omnipotent and holy. He is a consuming fire. And at the same time, he's a God of love. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> they are, both are not mutually exclusive and they are not um, an oxymoron. They are actually complementing because we do know that the fire of God, it purifies. Amen. And at the same time, we know that the love of God, it saves yes. because he loves and he gives his yes. only begotten son that has redeemed us yes. from this cruel plan of the wicked one. So today we really want to move our discussion to a place that may sound like a very controversial topic as we are going to be exposing Jesus Christ um, through the scriptures today. Uh, I promised you last week when we last met that we are going to be speaking to the gospels. We're going to be speaking to Jesus Christ and his ministry. Mm -hmm. And today we want to take this a step further. We want to look at another area of interest where Christ started his ministry. And we, we looked at the early ministry. We spoke about Nicodemus. We spoke about, um, we speak about the seed, the sower and the seed, and just how uh, people have been receptive to the ministry and the word and the teaching of Christ so far. Um, as we have seen in, in his ministry, um, even through the, the, the gospel of Mark, we speak about the different gospels and we speak about the synoptic gospels and we say those are the first three gospels. We speak about um, the book of John that speaks about Jesus Christ and his deity and speak about him from, a, from the God-man perspective, the son of God. Um, this week, we're going to take it a step further and I want you to um, turn in your Bibles, um, as, as I say, the topic, if, we, if I were to choose one this week, um, it would be exposing Jesus Christ. And um, um, there's, there's a lot of intention behind why I chose this. And we just want to get over to the scripture very quickly because we want to we wanna move through this. And I want you to keep your sword in hand. And by your sword, I mean your Bible, because we are really going to move through some scriptures today. And I want you guys to... Um, to just move with me as we go through in, this, in these um, scriptures. Um, one that we really want to start with is that we want to go over to the book of Luke, the one that, the one that was read earlier. And we are going to start with Luke 4, and we want to start from the 16th verse. And then we're going to go all the way through to 30. But we, we're, going to, we're going to walk through those scriptures, and I want you to, to, to move with me as we go through it. All right? Um, let us... Let, let us get into the word today and um, i'll give you a minute to go over there another scripture that we want to look at too and i want you to just have them uh, marked in your bible is matthew 11 and uh we we talk about matthew 11 6 uh, uh from 2 through to 6 and i'm going to just go to the throne of grace and ask god to breathe upon his word evangelist prayed so beautifully and i know that she touched it but i also like to come in agreement with everything that has been prayed father we thank you lord god for your word that you have sent, Lord God, to heal our diseases. And Lord God, we thank you that you are a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And this day, Lord God, we come before you and we look to you now, Lord God. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. And God, we recognize you for who you are and who you have been in our lives this day. And God, we want the word of our mouth this day to, and the meditation of our hearts to be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God, as you continue to be our strength and our redeemer. Father, I pray that you may send down your fire this day and consume the sacrifice, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Lord, the way how you ministered this word to me, Lord God, when I was studying it, Lord, give me the eloquence, give me the sharpness and the agility of wit, Lord God, to bring forth this word with the fire and the potency as you spoke it in my spirit. Yahweh, I come to you now knowing that I cannot do anything on my own. But Lord God, I simply look to you now and I ask you, El Elohim, to breathe upon me now. Holy Spirit, I stand in awe of you now and I bow before you now, counselor, teacher, comforter. Lord, I come to you now and I worship you, Holy Spirit, third person in the Godhead. I ask you now, to I invoke you now in this earthen vessel, Lord God. Speak through me, let Wayne die. And let Christ, let the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now quit in our mortal bodies this day as we'll be careful to give you all glory, all honor, and all praise in the name of Yeshua. I'm a Shiak, we pray. 
Amen. Amen. God bless your hearts again. So we just want to look at this scripture. And um, if we, when we are talking to this um, particular scripture, I want to give you a backdrop. This is the early, um, early stance in Christ's ministry and would be considered to be his first sermon ever. His first sermon. And we are over there in Luke 4. And we are looking at verse Verse, um, verse 16, and we see where Jesus um, launched his public ministry in a dramatic first sermon in the synagogue um, of Nazareth. And we know that he was born, he, he, was, he grew up in Nazareth. And we understand that there is this challenge that exists sometimes when you are to minister to those who have a sense of familiarity. Yes. They tend to look at you based on your circumstance, your parents, your background, yes, and there, yes. there seemed to be a preconceived notion. Mm -hmm. He stood up and he, he, he read from a scripture from the Old Testament. And this is something that is indicative of everyone from the disciples of Christ mm -hmm. to Christ himself or the apostles or anyone who has spoken anything in the New Testament that is noteworthy. They always base their, their, their notations, their teachings, their sermons on scriptures that were written of old, mm -hmm. prophetic scriptures that were spoken by either Moses that was written by either uh, 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 Isaiah, Zechariah, some prophet or patriot of old, mm -hmm. Samuel, the Chronicles. They go back to the books of the laws and the histories and the prophecies to kind of speak, whether David, the, the poetry, mm -hmm. or it, it's either pulling from some Old Testament scripture. And, and I... I, 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 I I dislike using the word Old Testament mm -hmm. because it, it gives this redundancy that I, it, it, mm -hmm. it, I strongly deprecate in my spirit mm -hmm. because I do not see anything about God's word that is really old. Mm -hmm. It is just covenants that were made of God and promises and, and, and the New Testament is a mere fulfillment of declarations and prophecies that were mm -hmm. spoken of in the Old Testament. Stay with me, we are going somewhere. Mm -hmm. So this morning we want to look at Jesus Christ and what he declared when he exposed um, himself <laughs> to this audience of people who seemingly are very familiar with him and his, his, his youthful years of growing up in Nazareth and knowing his family and the response that he got. So Jesus, using Isaiah 61 from verse 1 through to 2 uh, as his text, announced that he was the anointed, mm -hmm. the one anointed by the spirit to preach the gospel, as he mentioned there in Luke 18. Now, I just want you to go ahead and just read again what this, this, this story of what took place here in Luke. I want you to specifically go from verse, uh, from, from, from verse uh, 16, and we're just going to go through to 30. Go ahead. Luke 4, 16. Mm -hmm. And he came to Nazareth mm -hmm. where he had been brought up. Yes. And as his custom was, yes. he went into the synagogue on yes. the Sabbath day mm -hmm. and stood up for to read. Mm -hmm. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And when he had opened the book, mm -hmm. excuse me, he found the place where it was written. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord is upon me mm -hmm. because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Yes. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Yes. To preach deliverance to the captives. Yes. And recovering of sight to the blind. Yes. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Yes. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. And he closed the book mm -hmm. and he gave it again to the minister mm -hmm. and sat down. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Mm -hmm. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Mm. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, you will surely say unto me this proverb, Come on. physician, heal thyself. Hmm. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, sorry. I lost my spot, I'm sorry. Yes. And so we see here where Christ mm -hmm. is really pulling from a scripture that is very familiar, the book of Isaiah. He went to the ancient scriptures mm -hmm. um, to bring forth a truth 
prior to this, I want you to understand the journey that Christ has been on. Prior to this, we saw Christ being baptized. We see him being led. If you, yes. if you read at the top of the scripture, we see he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness mm. to be tempted of the devil. Yes. Funnily, how is it so that you are full of the Holy Spirit and led by the Spirit into the wilderness and to be tested of the devil? Because sometimes the test has to come to validate this anointing that yes. God has placed yes. on you. Yes. Some of us are willing and wanting this anointing, but yes. we are not willing to yield to the test. Amen. We are not Amen. willing to yield to the test. Christ yielded to the test. It says that the, the Spirit of God led him to be mm. tested. So he went through the testing and went through and passed with flying colors and now went back now to his community yes full of the holy spirit and anointed and so he was about to declare that which was spoken of him in isaiah 61 mm -hmm. and so he picked up the word of he went into the house of god read it for yourselves i'm not going to go through it but i'm i want you to read it for yourself and christ made some declarations about this scripture that he knew to be true he did not do it before he was full of the holy spirit because he was to speak of that which was already spoken because christ's life was about walking out that which was spoken yes, of him yes. so now he had Hallelujah. to bring truth yes. now that he went into the wilderness he was fortified and tested by he was tested by the enemy and fortified by the holy spirit that he stood his ground and stood up to the word and used the word of god as an ammunition to to to, to, to take down the devil's tricks and wiles he stood up full of the Holy Spirit, yes. now receiving the anointing, now being baptized, now receiving the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And now he was at the point where he walked out into his ministry, back to his hometown yes. to declare that the word of God has been fulfilled this day. He walked into the church. Mm -hmm. They were impressed with him. They were impressed with his teaching. They were impressed with everything before leading up to this point. But again, like Nicodemus, again, like when Christ speak yes. about sowing the seed and the yes. sower. And this, this, we are unveiling Christ. When you go to the gospel, I said to you that for the next couple of weeks, you're going to be teaching Christ. When he went to the, the truth of who he is. Yes. Mm. When you come into the truth of who you are, and I'm yes. speaking to someone today. Yes. People are willing to embrace you no matter what, as long as you are there and you are you are doing things yes. with, with all this, this splendor and awesomeness and excellent spirit mm -hmm. and everything is good and nice and you are healing and you are being a blessing to them. But when it comes to a time when the spirit of God is ready to declare who you are yes. to those who seem so familiar to you, yes. here comes a pushback. Yes. And we want to speak to exposing that which is spoken about you in the book today. Mm, yes. Because God has a word that is spoken about you. Mm. And people may not want to hear it. But the Spirit of God has sent me here today to speak, thus say the Lord, into your life. To yes. show you the plan and purpose and power that God has set up and, and put in place for you to be an effective minister of his word. And so Christ stood up in the face of his community and Jesus declared some points which were very potent and he made some very strong declaration for which, you know, we're going to see as we go through the story how, you know, the, the, uh, 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 Nazareth responded to him. Yes. Christ confirmed simple his life was a confirmation of that which has been spoken and prophesied. So confirming prophecies in the Old Testament, Jesus announced some factual things that have been spoken. One, he's declared that he is the anointed. He is the anointed one, anointed by the Spirit to preach the gospel. And what is the gospel? people of God. The gospel is the good news. Why is the news good? And why do the people need to hear good news? Could it be because of a position that you're in? Mm -hmm. Could it be of, because of a physical state, because of an economical state, because of a mental state, because of an emotional yeah. state that you are in? 
could that be the reason why God has to bring this good news to a certain set of people? Because these people are either going through some oppressive state or some oppression or some form of, 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 of what you call adversity, why it was necessary to bring, be the bringer of this good news, this gospel. Because sometimes we use words and we use it cavalier. Yes, yes, Why yes. would they need to get good news, um, evangelists? Mm -hmm. Why would you need good news? Because maybe you are in a state where yes. things around you are not so good Amen. and are not so wholesome and not yes, so yes, solid. Yes, yes. But God, Christ says, I am the one that has been anointed by the Spirit of God to bring forth this Amen. good news. Amen. So he first declared who he was. Jesus also said that this is the acceptable year of the Lord. In verse 19, he declared that. A reference to the Old Testament concept of the year of Jubilee. Guys. The book of Leviticus, Leviticus 25, 25 and start at verse 8. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee. Come on. Seven times seven years, mm -hmm. and the space of the seven Sabbaths of years mm -hmm. shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Mm -hmm. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound yes. on the tenth month of the seven months. Yes. In the day of atonement shall mm -hmm. ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Mm -hmm. And ye shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land yes. and all the inhabitants thereof. Yes. It shall be a jubilee unto thee. Yes. And ye shall return every man unto his possession. Mm -hmm. And ye shall return every man unto his family. Mm -hmm. A jubilee shall, th shall that 50th year be unto you. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not sow, neither reap. And that which grows of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it, mm -hmm. of thy vine undress. Mm -hmm. For it is a jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Mm -hmm. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Mm -hmm. Through what verse, Pastor? Stop at, stop at um, 19. In the year of this jubilee, ye mm -hmm. shall return every man unto his possession. Mm -hmm. And if thou shalt ought, thou sell ought unto thy neighbor, mm -hmm. or buyest ought of thy neighbor's hand, mm -hmm. ye shall not oppress one another. Mm -hmm. According to the number of years after the jubilee, thou shalt buy of thy neighbor, and according unto the number of years of the fruits, he shall sell unto thee. According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof, and according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. For according to the number of the years of the fruits that he sell unto thee, Ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear thy God, for I am the Lord your God. Wherefore ye do do my statutes and keep my judgments mm -hmm. and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land in safety. And the land shall yield her fruit, and ye shall eat your full fill and dwell therein safely. All right, so there are some things that have been declared by this um, jubilee, this year of jubilee, and Christ intentionally mm. kind of went to the year of jubilee for a purpose. Mm. And today I really want to speak to this mm. whole matter of what and why did Christ emphasize this. Um, every 50 years, let us, you, you made some points when you read there. Mm -hmm. Every 50 years, the Israelites were set uh, were to set their slaves free. Mm -hmm. So the captives were to set free. Mm -hmm. I want you to see the parallel wow. of what Christ is mm -hmm. setting the stage for this. He's saying that this moment, this mm -hmm. immediate time, this is a, is, is a rima word that I'm bringing to you, a word that is definitely on point and on season and if this moment that you are living is a year of jubilee it is divine prophetic anointing and appointment why i am standing in your midst today to declare the year of jubilee that there will be some setting free that there will be some pardons that's going to take place because i have been anointed of god by the holy one by the by the holy spirit to loose and set captives free and because of that there are going to be some pardoning 
yes. evangelist. Yes. So, so Jesus Christ was speaking to something that has already been set in the covenant, yes. Yes. in the commandment, in the royal laws, that there will be a pardon in every 50 years. But this 50 year, something was going to happen. It was a dramatic setting of the stage for something that yes. has never yes. and never before blessing to be released into the world. Continuous. Yes, yes. And never before blessing that would be an eternal blessing that would be released now upon the people. Yes. So he was setting the stage to announce this great thing that God has done to humanity yes. by sending the anointed one as, prof as promised yes. by Isaiah. So the acceptable year of the Lord is mentioned in Luke in Luke 19, in Luke 4 and verse 19, a reference to the concept of the Jubilee year. And we see that we just read about that. Another thing that Jesus Christ mentioned, and I think it is very noteworthy. Apparently, Jesus intended to make this, this whole, he, he, Jesus claimed that he started to preach to these people in his hometown to kind of bring this good news. And the good news was to be brought to a certain set of oppressed people. So now Jesus Christ was highlighting that the gospel was for the poor, brokenhearted, blind, and the oppressed. Also relating to what took place in Isaiah 61. So Christ literally said, this is my job description. Yes. He made it very clear, not walking out as one who did not understand his purpose. Mm -hmm. A lot of us today, we are out there making much ado of nothing because we are making ourselves so busy with so many things that are going on that is going on into our lives but at the same time we are not being experiencing what you call that 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 that, that joy of god we are not experiencing that that, that 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 blessing from god where we are able to understand that here as what paul narrowed down his entire walk to one thing this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and leaving and moving forward to this one thing that God has called him to. And so Christ was here declaring this one thing that I'm here for. I'm here for those who are downtrodden. I'm here for the brokenhearted. Yes. I'm here for those. He says that he reminded them firstly that, that he says he firstly that he was here to bring the good news uh, to, to the poor, to the brokenhearted, and to those who are in captive, to set prisoners free, uh, to the blind and to the oppressed. At first, the people welcome these words. When you look at verse 22, what you see, if you see what's there, they welcomed him and perhaps understood this to be of a figurative kind of speech because they probably thought that Christ was speaking, hype, you know, figuratively uh, uh, in a prophetic form. Yes. But when they realized, but soon they began to question his rights to such claim when, uh, 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 when you hear them state, uh, we know this fellow. We know him. We know his parents. Um, um, they, they, they ask the question in verse 22, isn't this Joseph's boy? Isn't, it the one, isn't he one of us? So in other words now, they start relating him and start pulling him down from his place of esteemed uh, position that yes, God has yes, placed him. Yes. And they bring him down to their community and say, you are not the son of God. You are not the anointed one of Israel because you are one of us. And they took offense in God. Yes, yes. In him, yes. just because of where you are yes. born, just because yes. of where you grew up, just yes. because of yes. who yes. they are, they recognize you to be with their natural carnal eyes. Yes. I'm speaking to someone today. You understand? They could not recognize Isaiah's prophecy. Mm. And there are prophecies and words that Christ has spoken over your life where it so happened that you probably are not are not able to hear what God is saying. You're not able to understand what has been spoken over your life. You, you, you are in a place where God has spoken to you and the people around you refuse to refuse, refuse to receive what has been spoken over your life, what has been prophesied over your life because they, re, they, they are judging you based on your past, yes. based on where you're from, based on your color of your skin, based on your ethnic background, based on where you grew up, based on the things that they are using to qualify Christ and not qualify the anointing in your life but Christ has sent me here today to remind you that the scripture that is spoken about you shall come to pass mm -hmm. if you would only pursue and continue Amen. to persevere Amen. in faith Amen. go ahead evangelist you're hearing something 
No, really. I was just kind of meditating upon what you said about many times we have get mm -hmm. the word of God, mm -hmm. that the word of God, and that's why I always say once you're in prayer or meditation, the word of God comes. It's so important for us to immediately write it down. Yes. Because as we learned with the parable of the seed and the soul, mm -hmm. the enemy comes to snatch this word from yes. us. Yes. And even as Pastor Wayne is speaking right now, and even in this service, the Holy Spirit may be reminding you of a call and a purpose that God has placed upon your life. Do not dismiss that voice. Write down the things that God is saying to you in this time or this season. Mm -hmm. Write down that purpose and that commission that is illuminating to you right now. I even pray that it may be strengthened now. Come on. I pray for a greater illumination, a greater understanding, a greater unction and prompting of the call of God upon your life mm -hmm. on this moment or at this season. And don't discount it. Make it plain. Write it down. Put it on your mirrors, as we always say, because you Come do on. not want to miss your assignment. Come on. And many of you may be caught up in following another man's or another person's vision. assignment yes, yes. and mission and vision. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you're missing the calling and the purpose that God has for your life. Come on. You are going to have to give an account for it. Mm -hmm. So you ha you can't even now dismiss the naysayers. It's not about them. Hmm. No flesh shall glory in his presence. And haters. It's we not about the about haters, them. what people want to say. <laughs> Come on. You have to get yourself boxed in. Yes. You can imagine if Paul was supposed to be distracted about his past. Yes. Distracted about the persecution of the church, Come about on. what the church kept saying about him. Yes. Because he had to be fighting against them. He had to be fighting against the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. And he has to be fighting against the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But he said, this one thing I do, mm -hmm. I have to forget the things that are behind and press on towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. That has to be your tunnel vision yes. that has to be your ambition and your goal mm -hmm. pressing towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus you have to run your race in determination yes. so I pray even right now that the purpose and plan of God will be illuminated into your mind and your hearts and you make it your main focus in your life in this season amen amen, amen. and that is that is exactly where we want to bring our hearts today as we dissect this word amen. we are going to see that Christ mentioned certain persons because you know what people tend to want to we speak about the impact of religion mm -hmm. and how religion sometimes tend to play more of a focus because people are caught up with their own biases yes. and their own Id idiotic Id idiosyncrasies yes. and their own expectations as to how god yes. should operate yes. Yes. but jesus christ came and he tore down some of these yes. fables Lord and these god, and these Lord. and these these social expectations that people had and he brought and put things into perspective mm -hmm. saying that don't you know that even in the Old Testament and all the books that you so glorify, mm -hmm. even the life of Elijah and Elijah, and even the life of David and some of these persons who you consider to be patriots mm -hmm. of the Bible, they had to move away from the house of Israel mm -hmm. for, for God's word to be received. Yes, yes. And he showed some examples. And I want you to bring, to, to look at some of these examples now, evangelists. Just go over in, in the same, in, in Luke, Luke, um, Luke 4, where you are. Mm -hmm. Just read verse 25 and 26. Christ made some reference to some persons. He said, Jesus' word might have well uh, represented a yes. threat to the yes. image yes. Yes. they wanted to project to those who were watching. Yes. So there are some persons who have some religious agenda and they are more caught up with the way people perceive them we talk about about truth and perception and and being accepted by the by, by, by the world at large and what people being caught up with what people think about yes, you yes, yes yes and so we see that there are so many who are more concerned about how they are represented and how the world see them mm -hmm. than they are caught up mm -hmm. with what the real truth of god's word mm -hmm. is and the agenda of this Christian gospel walk that we are called to preach the gospel. We, we read in Jude, in, in, in um, Timothy 2, where, where Paul charged Timothy yes, and yes. said, preach the gospel in season, out of season, whether it's popular, whether yeah. it's unpopular, preach the gospel. And so Christ says, I have been sent, but I'm going to show you yourself in the Old Testament and just give you the word as to how you are going to respond to me today. So God spoke. Um, 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 and before you read, I think I think um, I see a hand went up. I think it's Sister Brianna. Go ahead, Sister Brianna. I think you wanted to bring out a point, and I want to give you a chance to speak on that. Go ahead. 
Um, my point was basically, I really liked um, where you were touching evangelists about how, you know, um, sometimes uh, when we start stepping out into like our calling, those that knew us from before can start trying to say, but aren't you this person? Aren't you that person? I really like the way that Christ kind of responded to that mm -hmm. because he never really spoke necessarily about trying to big himself up. He tried right. to glorify his father who is in heaven. And what he did was just speak the word, speak the truth, mm -hmm. and then let his life, let his actions speak for him. Usually whenever you see someone saying, but this is the Christ, it's um, someone else speaking someone else. of yes. him based on yes. how they see him acting. Um, and I think there was even a point where he said, okay, if I came uh, or if he maybe he was talking about someone else and he said if they came speaking of themselves then you would know that they are not of God but because they come speaking of God and glorifying God that is how you know that they are of God wonderful that is that is beautiful Brianna that's a good notation and a good powerpoint highlight yes. so that's wonderful that is so true and Christ did not get caught up into someone mentioned this uh, with regards to the question of the day earlier that some people just want to have arguments i yes. think it was sister deja, deja yes. she mentioned the Doctrine fact of some argument. people that want to go on and on and on and you know be back and forth in arguments about oh this god that god this god that god we are going to touch some of those today mm -hmm. because there are persons who have their own personal agenda yes. but christ didn't get caught up with his own agenda all yes. he did was spoke and walk out what was prophesied yes about yes, him yes. he walked out his faith and he walked out what was written in the word about him mm -hmm. that is what i'm charging you today you need to know what is said in the bible about you you are called to be followers of christ and if we are called to be followers of christ we must get to a place where we we lock out the noise block out what people are saying and get to a place where we know that what is written in the word is about me, where we know the people to whom God has sent us. And even if we are rejected, we keep on moving. We keep on moving. You're going to see how Christ responds to this, this pushback. You keep on moving. You keep on preaching. And that is what Paul was saying to Timothy when he says, preach the word in season, out of season, whether it's popular, whether you're rejected, whether you're accepted, keep on preaching. Amen. And that's where Christ is taking the word today. And you know, Pastor, mm -hmm. I'm reminded as Brianna was speaking that Christ wasn't even accepted by his brethren. He was not. And brethren, I mean his, his, his brother, his family. Brothers. Yes. You know, they basically they will come and call him and he'll say, Listen, who is who is my brethren? You know, hmm. this all oh, your family is calling to listen. Those who are doing the will of God right now, listen to his voice. They are his brethren. Yes. And they will somehow try to mock him. I remember there's an incident where there was a feast and you're like, oh, the feast is going on. That's a good place to show forth, show forth your glory and show forth your power. Mm -hmm. And aren't you coming with us now? He's like, um, no, I'm not going right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm not your showpiece. <laughs> and, and he had to go quietly by himself yes. afterwards. And, and I think in James and in Jude, it's afterwards that they, they didn't even call themselves their brethren to the listeners. It's after his resurrection. Yes. His resurrection <laughs> that they become convicted and mm -hmm. believe mm -hmm. so i'm saying to you right now that you may have given your life to the lord and you feel alone yes because your brethren your family members your close friends not supporting they do your not vision support your vision mm -hmm. they do not walk you may be even be mocked by it or they're yes. trying to pull you back then I, I i charge you keep praying for them yes keep sharing your faith as yes. long as they will receive it mm -hmm. because even if they may not receive it now mm -hmm. there's going to come a time by the grace of god where they will receive it and yes. receive it i remember years ago in in jamaica um where i was going to church they would have um i think they used to call it an andrew it was like an andrew prayer card mm -hmm. I think I was a young adult then to put down the names of people that you're praying for, for salvation. Hmm. None of those persons were saved at that time. Wow. And down the line now, I'm able to say that every, I think it was five names I put on the list. And wow. I remember some of those names clearly. All five of those persons I can say right I've now as either given their lives to the Lord or baptized or on their way to do it. Yes. People that I would never think Imagine. some of them even mocked yes. God. Mm. But there's a power in prayer Yes. and there's a power being obedient to his world so do not get yourself into the flesh when it comes to evangelism or yes. prayer or curses yes. Yes. you just have to keep speaking the word yes. just keep praying them putting them on those prayer lists mm -hmm. keep laying them before the lord mm -hmm. and allow the holy spirit as we said to be the one, the one that, that brings forth the increase amen. amen this is a 
very, I, I believe that we are speaking to someone. I, I don't know who I'm speaking to out there today, but I know that God has sent this word for someone. You are struggling and people are, people are trying to box you and tell you who you have been over the years. Mm -hmm. And God sent me today to remind you, it is not about where you are coming from, it's about where you are going. He has he set up something for you that is, is, is completely different from what people are projecting onto you. And today I want you to get yourself ready for that, for that transition, for Christ declared, this is the year of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. It's your time to declare that this is the year of Jubilee where things of the past are canceled. All my old debts are canceled. The slaves are released. Everything that was held up in my life, the years of the locust and conquer worm and the yes, palmer worm yes, are yes. spoken in Joel 2. They are canceled. They are canceled. Yes, and then we are world. standing under an open heaven yes. and God is about to do a new thing. Go ahead, Sister Kia, ask Sister Kia and speak. Minister Kia. Yeah, please, uh, please don't call me pastor. <laughs> God bless you all. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to say that I, I just love this word because lately I've been really hearing that God is calling people. It's like a clarion call, mm -hmm. calling them into the position. And a lot of people feel where they don't have enough or they're not, they're not ready yet. They're measuring themselves in the wrong way. They're measuring themselves by uh, works and miracles. Whereas God is saying, your experience, the hell that you that that I've brought you through is enough to show you, show you how to stand in the midst of adversity, showing you how to operate um power and faith and all those things. So I just really love I love this word today. And it came to me as evangelists was speaking about the a fervent prayer of the righteous avail much. You know, a fervent when you're a fervent, you have a passion for something. Come on. And 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 um it avails me, it produces. So when you come to God in spirit and in truth and you have a passion about what you're praying for, it will begin to produce. Amen. You know, God created the, the heavens with his mind, but he created the things of the earth with his mouth. Yes. You know, he spoke those things. So you begin to speak things with passion. It will begin mm -hmm. to produce, you know, exactly. so, you know, don't give up. You can speak those things over yourself. If you feel you don't have um, enough, you can begin to declare and decree that you are enough in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. That is Amen. wonderful. Yes. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes. Those yes. words were potent and very much a confirmation. Amen. God bless you, woman of God. So we are, I, I'm going to speak through this word. I'm going to speak through this word because there are some points that we really need to ribbit today. And I want you to follow with me. I make sure that I want you to write down some of these scriptures. I want you to know. So Jesus stated, because they were caught up with their image that they wanted to project to the world that was watching. Mm -hmm. They were more concerned about how they were perceived mm -hmm. more than the truth of what Christ was trying to bring to them, mm -hmm. that their freedom and their deliverance mm -hmm. had come. There are persons who are more concerned about public image, about whether or not you're going to get accepted or not. And I heard all the responses to the question this morning. We are not tearing down those responses. But I'm here to remind you that when it comes to the work of God, we stand, we are called to be a peculiar people, a set apart nation. We are to stand fast in the liberty. We are supposed to be salt and light. We change. We are the world changers. We yes. are the catalysts. We are the ones that are agents of change. We go into situations and declare God and bring the light of God into those situations. So Jesus stated that his model of faith in the Old Testament were not always those Jewish and Hebrew persons. And go ahead now, evangelist, and read that scripture that I asked you to read, verse 25 and 26. And we're going to talk from, you can read from 25 through to 27. Yes. But I tell you mm -hmm. of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, mm -hmm. when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, mm -hmm. when great famine was throughout all the land. Yes. But unto none of them was Elias sent, mm -hmm. save unto Sarepta, mm -hmm. a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Mm -hmm. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias the prophet, mm -hmm. and none of them were cleansed, save in Naaman the Syrian. Mm -hmm. So... 
Jesus Christ is here reminding them that I have come to my own. Yes. And like prophets of old, Israel has a tendency to move away from God's word and to not give themselves the capacity for the spirit of God to work in their lives. Christ spoke and said, many widows were in, in Israel at the time. But the prophet of God, Elijah, had to go all the way to Sidon to find a widow that had the faith and the capacity to receive the blessing from God. Mm. He said, many lepers were in Israel. Many lepers are in the church. Many mm. people are in the church who are broke, disgusted, and busted. Many people are in the church who are, who are, who are without a husband, without a wife, without a financial provision, without the, the, the spiritual blessing without the healing, without the things that they need in your life to be sustained, to be able to be sustained in the grace and in the blessing of God. Many exist today who say that they are walking with God, walking with Israel, but God has moved away from them and gone to some outside nations. Yes, 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 outside yes. of the church, Christ went yes. and chose his oh, own yes. disciples. Yes, yes. Outside of the church, these apostles and yes. preachers and yes. prophets yes. of the word of God yes. has to go to bring forth the yes. power of God God, to manifest the work that God wants to do because those who claim to be religious have lacked the capacity to receive the power and the blessings of God. Amen, amen. And so Jesus Christ had to pull for examples of the, the, the fact that these, these men of God had to go outside of Israel to do mighty works yes, of God yes, because yes. they were not ready. As you would have said in Jamaica, you're not ready yet. Mm -hmm. They were not ready to receive that which God was ready to pour out on them. So in both cases, it indicated that the prophet Elijah and Elijah had to frequently go to nations outside of the people of Israel to who, who would respond to find people who would actually respond to God. Today, I'm speaking to you. Have you found yourself in a position where you are so caught up with what the world thinks that you are afraid to speak of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and to speak of what he represented? We are called to be Christ followers. That simply means that we are not called to do that which is popular and that which is accepted. The, the, the apostles and the, and the Christians of all became martyrs for what they believed. This is why the gospel of Jesus Christ is believed because over 500 people saw him at once and many have been killed. If, if, if this was not a true word that he rose from the dead, who would have gone to be dipped into, in, in, into hot water, hot tar and boiled, and to be crucified upside down? Who would have gone through these situations of torture and being beaten and being beheaded and being killed over and over and over, standing for the truth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and that he is the son of God, the chosen anointed one, the Messiah. And we are today afraid to stand for controversial issues in the face of what we consider to be rejection from the audiences that we so seek to be popular among. God is calling us up to a higher standard. Mm -hmm. It is time, church of God, for us to expose Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This is the call that God has sent me to remind you today that we are not called to be, to be, to be dumbed down and to be desensitized according to the world's mm -hmm. appetite. Mm -hmm. We are called to change and to make, to make Christ known to those who expose yes, Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, 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 yes. Are we like those Nazarene listeners so committed to preserving the status quo mm. that, God has, that God has to walk around us to accomplish his work? Mm. That is the question I want to ask you today. When you look to the top of the scripture, what does it say in verse 30? Where it says that Jesus Christ had to do what? After all of this rejection, what did Christ do? Passed through the midst of them and went his way. So Christ has to pass through the midst of the first persons that he preached his sermon to wow. and go his way. How many of us, Christ has to pass us and go his way because he has brought the word of truth and, and we have rejected yeah. it. Nothing could be more tragic than that Jesus would pass through our midst and go his way. 
and we not receive the word of truth, the only thing that can save us, mm. because it is only God's, be only God's begotten son is the only source of eternal life and truth that exists in this world today. So I charge you people of God, we have got to get to a place where we move away from what is popular mm. and get to a place where we respond to God because we know that God has called us to truth mm. and to be his light and salt. Yes. I want to turn again to a scripture evangelist, the second scripture that we're going to use to wrap up this teaching today. And I want you to go over to Matthew 4. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have to be careful as you're speaking, Pastor Wayne, yes. as, as we have spoke about many of us, we have had these preconceived notions because of religion yes. and traditions. And yes. we grew up in different churches and traditions. And we have to go back to where we see if what we are doing lines up to the word of God. Yes. Because many of it are traditions of men, yes. which is the thing that Yeshua Christ basically addressed mm -hmm. when he came. That's one of the things he spoke to yes. many times consistently over and over again about seeking to keep as a priority traditions of men yes. over the word of God. And the approval of man. <laughs> yes. And therefore it's important as always to just open the word of God, mm -hmm. open Matthew, open mm -hmm. the books that speak about Yeshua mm -hmm. and look at what he did and seek to do the things that he did. Look at the things he rejected and make sure that you yourself are rejecting them and embrace the true gospel. Yes. As I always say, so we are called to be Christians. Yes. Which are Christ followers. followers. Yes. Christ. yes. So what he did is what we should seek to do. Amen. And let's go over to Matthew 11. Matthew 11. And we're going to read from verse 2 through to 6. Matthew chapter 11, mm -hmm. 2 through 2 to 6. Mm -hmm. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, mm -hmm. he sent two of his disciples mm -hmm. and said unto them, Are thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and shew John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Ah, so let us talk about Jesus Christ and how he proved to John. When they asked, when the question was asked of Christ to say, are you this the, the, the son of God, are you the anointed one or should we expect another? Christ did not go into an elaborate declaration mm -hmm. of himself to Brianna's point earlier, to Sister Brianna's point. What Christ did was simply just say, go and tell John the works that you have seen. Yes. Christ is not a Christ. He's not a God of talk. He's a God of action. He's a God of works. He says, tell John that which you have seen me do. Tell John what you have seen. And so Christ spoke to the things that he read. Jesus, Jesus had a great deal to say about how we as the people of God should respond to those who are in need. And he spoke about it. He says, what do you see me doing? So read back some of those highlights that he said that I did. What am I doing? The blind receive their the sight. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Come on. Lepers cleanse. Yes. Deaf can hear. The dead are raised. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Mm -hmm. So our Lord respond to John the Baptist with a list of things that he had done that reveal the power and presence of God and his love. Mm -hmm. So if our lives is more about what people have to say, mm. oh, who is it that is bringing the report about you? Is it that people are looking at your actions and are able to see and be able to declare that, yes, the spirit of the Christ is in your life because you could not do these things. Like we see, Christ may have critiques, but one thing his critiques could not say, that he's not anointed of God. Mm -hmm. Because they, even we see Nicodemus, we yes. see everyone that has approached Christ so far has to come to the realization that he has the spirit of the one true and yes. living God yes. because the works that he does. So we now need to understand that when we see our churches, when we see this religious thing that is taking place in this era that we live in, where it's all about shake and anointing and this and that and touch, but we don't see anyone that is Christ measure us when we were called to the kingdom of God by saying, I was hungry mm -hmm. and you did not feed me. 
I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and you did not come to visit me. I was in prison and you did not come to, to, to comfort me. These are the attributes that represent the actions of the kingdom of those who are of the kingdom of Christ because this is what Jesus did. Jesus 10, he says, I come for the brokenhearted. I visit the sick. I heal those who are in prison. I set captives free. I am here for those who are oppressed in our society. I am here to bring, at, set at liberty those who are held captive. If we are not bringing those who are captive and setting them free, we are not operating in the spirit, the Holy Spirit of the living God. Amen. And the truth of God's word is what set the captive free. Amen. So when we find ourselves in a place of compromise on the word of God, we have moved away from being the real catalyst and the real power and the purpose of God is not being manifested in our lives until we get back to the truth of God's word without compromise. So Christ used the surprising evidence to declare himself by speaking to himself and representing that he himself, the most telling evidence of his work, the most telling evidence was his work among the poor and the downtrodden and the needy. He was able to declare who he was by his very works among those in our society that need to be uplifted. Can you say that about yourself? If we are Christ's followers, aren't we supposed to be doing the same thing? How many persons have been impacted by you this week? How many persons have you poured into? How many persons have you gone to who has a need? How many persons have you uplifted? This spirit of God is not in you for you to walk around and fly on a high every day. And for people to say, oh, you're so anointed because you can shababa, shababa, shababa all day. That's not what God's spirit is given unto you for. The gifts of the spirit are given for the edifying of the body that the people of God may be fully built up. And so if we are not pouring into others, if we are not meeting people in their situation where they are going through their toils and their, and, and, and their hardships and we are not being a strength to anyone, we need to question our faith and question what, whether we are truly followers of Christ. I understand this message today is a hard one because it takes us to a place where it's not about shining at the world, it's about shining at ourselves. And we are called to do an introspection of our own lives. Mm -hmm. Our culture today wants us to know whether Christ is still alive among his people. It's kind of like the question that John the Baptist asked his mm -hmm. disciples to tell Jesus. Are you the real Christ? It's the world today and its culture is asking us as the Christians today. Is Christ still alive among his people? Mm -hmm. Like John's observer we are asking whether those who, who claim to be Christ followers are truly of God or whether they, are, whether they are to look somewhere else to find the true representation of God. Mm -hmm. They are especially uh, 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 paying attention to our posture towards the poor and they are watching how we are responding to those who are destituted and in need. And I will say this without any form of apologies. When we look from, from it goes to from the palace to the governments, to the church leaders, to religious organizations, to judiciaries, any society that oppresses their poor is not one that represents the very culture and the very principles of Christ. Because Christ says that I come for those who are oppressed to set captives free and to break prison bar. If you are imprisoning people, if you are oppressing people, if, you are, if your principle and your core culture is about oppressing the poor and, and, and imprisoning and, and oppressing and being the oppressor to people, you do not represent the culture and the teachings of Christ. It is a hard truth. It's not popular, but I will say it even after say it alone because this is what Christ used to represent himself, the evidence of himself in scripture. And so we see we are in Joel. It was promised by the Spirit of God in Joel 2 and verse 28 and 29. 
Christ was able to speak about himself because he was anointed of God and the spirit of God was upon him. Likewise, we were promised this anointing and we have been given this anointing and we declare and we proclaim to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yet are we seeing in our own lives, lives being affected, heal, people being healed from, from their sicknesses, uh, people being lifted up from their depression, uh, 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 prison bars being opened and people walking out of their situation of going to the same mistakes and being thrown into the same form some of oppression whether it be spiritual oppression whether it be social oppression whether it be whatever it is that people are going through that's causing them to go into the cycle are we as christians setting captives to be and breaking prison bars are we doing what christ was doing and what he used to to, 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 to validate himself as the one sent by God. If we are sent by God, we are called to do these very things. Mm -hmm. So we, it is worth us asking the question, are we as involved and as concerned with the material needs of, the, of others as, we, as, as, as it is written in the scripture, as we are with their spiritual needs? Do we respond to the physical needs as, as intentionally as Christ did? Even if we have only material things to give, have we been givers? Have we been able to impact other people's lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Today, I want to highlight some points as I close out this word today, because a lot of times when we say we want to be like Christ, we always want to associate. We always want to associate with all of the, 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 the flamboyance of what we think that, you know, yes, 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 the glamour of the kingship of God. But we don't want to talk about the other areas of Christ, the suffering and going into, into the highways and byways and preaching the gospel and going to people who really are oppressed and those who are suffering to really speak the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't want to do these hard things. What we want to do is the glamour. And I did use the analogy of the of, 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 a, of a pastor that I met in the mall one day and we were speaking and exchanging about you know working in the in, in the vineyard of Christ so to speak as Christ used the analogy of the vineyard and she spoke about the fact that she was in this mega church where the lights were bright mm -hmm. and she she felt so 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 called to ministry and she operated as a pastor as long as it was on a bright stage with with a thousand plus people who was in front of her thousands of people in front of her and she was able to minister and she was in that glorious splendor of being called the pastor and everyone esteemed her but when she was given a budget of thousands not that she had to go out there and raise the money evangelist mm -hmm. she was given a budget of, of hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions, if not, if not so, mm -hmm. to go build a ministry and go labor and go seek people for the kingdom of God. And she said that she had to turn it over because she found out that she was not passionate about that. Mm -hmm. That spoke volume. What are we really passionate about? If we are called to be like Jesus, today I want to highlight some things that we will have to do in our personal life if we are going to come to the claim and to the aspiration of saying that we are like Jesus. And some of these things that we want to do, and this is something that if you are able to, I would like you to take a screenshot of this because I'm just going to hit the bullet points, but you need to know these scriptures. You need to mark these scriptures down and make them become a part of your life to say that, hey, this is something that I want to involve myself in when it comes to being like Christ. I want to move away from what, the, what is portrayed because it seemed like something that appeals to our emotion and gets to the core truth of what it really looks like to be like Christ. And we say to be what it really means to be like Christ. To be like Christ, it means to accept our roots. Jesus Christ accept his heritage. He walked into Nazareth, into Nazareth and he, he represented himself as a Nazarene. And he said, you know what? I am here to speak to my people and to identify with you. Of course, he was rejected because the stone that the builders refused became the head cornerstone. Jesus also engaged the world's pain, in the, in the world's pain and struggles. 
and we give scriptures. And I want you to keep those scriptures and references. You might want to hold on to this and say, this is my blueprint to know yeah. what it is that I want to do in my life. Yes. If I want to be a Christ follower, yes. I need to yes. follow what he did. I need to do what Christ did. There is a, there's a, there's a wristband I had when I was going through college and to high school and it was double, double D J D. What would Jesus do? This is what we need to walk every day, understanding that we are not called to be our own. We are called to be followers of Christ. Christ walked up to his disciple and he simply said, follow me, follow me, do what I do, See, preach what I preach, teach what I teach, to commit ourselves to others, others, other believers, no matter how weird they appear to be. That is one of our number three on the list of things that we are called to do as Christ. These are eight principles that we should apply to our lives. Another one is that we should admit that we are vulnerable to temptations as Christ did when he allowed himself to go into the wilderness and to be tempted. Another one is that we are to op openly proclaim the message of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus Christ taught and he says that we should not light a candle and put it under a bushel or put it under our beds or put it under a concealed area, but we are to put it on a lantern that the entire world can see that we are the light and that we don't hide what we truly believe. And so as Christians, we are called to be representative, to be lights, and we put it in a bright place. That means that we are to speak of Christ no matter what. We are to be quick to answer when it comes to what we believe in and who we believe in. So we admit that we are vulnerable. We proclaim Christ and we make him known to the entire world. We are to commit ourselves to changed thinking and behavior. We are supposed to know that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, as the Apostle Paul put it. We are to serve others, especially those who are oppressed and without Christ. We are called to be ministers to the world and to be light and soul to the world, to affirm others in leadership. So we are not supposed to operate in malice and jealousy because of other people's giftings, mm. but we are supposed to understand that we are one body, yes. and our body is called to move in harmonious rhythm. So we are called to move together and to be on one accord and to support each other and to strengthen each other and to pray up each other and to be of encourager of the brethren that spirit of of barnabas as he was with the apostles he was an encourager of the apostles mm -hmm. today this is the word of god that god has sent me to declare over your lives and i'm asking you people of god let us move away from what is considered to be popular in our society let us move away from the socially accepted norms and get back to the principles and the morality and the teachings and the admonishings of Jesus Christ because we are Christians, Christ followers. Amen. God bless your hearts. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Wayne. And I'm going to, if you didn't get a chance to take a screenshot of those scriptures, I'm going to circulate it as well on WhatsApp. Um, I think they're good verses to meditate on throughout this week mm -hmm. and to prayerfully consider especially those who you are not sure what your purpose is, what yes. you're calling as, at this time. As you read each verse, prayerfully read it because we're all members of one body. Mm -hmm. The hand cannot do what the foot does. The head cannot does what the arm does or the fingers, but each part of the body, even your very fingernail, your toenail yes. is, is, is significant. Mm -hmm. And you have a purpose to carry out in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. We are not called to be spectators yes. where we just come each week and we sit and we go home. I have been in the spectator more, yes. yes. But we are called to all find ourselves busy about the things of God. Mm -hmm. We admit that everybody has different strengths. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm believing God that as you read the verses, that your strength will be illuminated mm -hmm. to you. And then you start taking the steps to move in that area. We also know that it's a time of pandemic. Mm -hmm. So some of the things, especially pure love, some of the outreach that we used normally to do, do yes. we normally do, they're not available to us. Mm -hmm. 
But what you can do in that time is to build yourself up mm -hmm. in the word, mm -hmm. build yourself, use that mm -hmm. time. And that's why I like Sabbath because Sabbath is a day where you just committed to say, God, I'm it's, committing it's this 24 <laughs> yes. hours to you. Mm -hmm. It's about edifying myself, feeding myself on the word. It's nothing but you. Yes. And as you do this, as you meditate upon the word, I believe Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you what you think. And you're going to say, man, this past, I know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to do this. Can you get me set up in the ministry to do this? Can we partner and do this? Mm -hmm. And just watch God move in your life. And then you may be partner with somebody else that has a similar calling, mm -hmm. but prayerfully trust God and read the scriptures that he revealed to you. Mm -hmm. So father, as we come to a close now, we thank you for your word, Lord. We pray that the word will not be snatched away, God, yes. that it will take root, oh God almighty, and mm -hmm. take root in the soil and the hearts of those who are within earshot, oh God. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that everyone will feel encouraged and strengthened and determined, oh God. Yes, we Lord. pray for renewed faith and renewed passion and renewed purpose purpose in the things of God. Yes, and yes. even as Pastor Wayne comes with the benediction, God, we pray, oh God, that your saving grace will continually shine upon the lives of your people mm -hmm. and that Holy Spirit will govern their lives in everything that they do. Yes, in the Lord. name of Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I do believe that today's word is a reminder and a call to get back to making Christ the principal authority in our lives, to give him a supreme reign and our total allegiance and loyalty to God first. It is God's first, the first commandment, love the Lord thy God with all your heart. And we cannot allow those idols to build up in our lives that stand between us where we compromise God's truth. We have got to be vigilant. We've got to be bold. We've got to be watchful. We have got to be very, very sober and to be conscious of the fact that, you know what, God called us to a standard. And we have got to Hold that standard sincerely, not just as men pleasers, but upholding it as unto God. And today, God has not just called back in the day, it was about a priest and a priest having this order and a priest having this call. But we see even in the book in, in, in Isaiah 61, where God really called Israel and say that, listen, I have given you all this call to be high, to be priests and to be people who can administer and lead. Even though we have our personal jobs that we have, we are still called to be light of the world and to mm -hmm. be salt and to be a city that is set on a hill. We have got to be the light wherever we are. We are not saying that you should break any laws and go into your schools or whatever and do what you have to do. But when people come to you and say to you that, you know what, this is what you need, that they, they, they need to hear, they want to understand what is it that brings the light and the life to your life and what it is that, that says this and say that. And it's one time when we are allowed to really go against the laws of men and it's when it's about declaring Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So I even repent on what I just said a few seconds ago. We are allowed, Paul Peter said, we would rather obey God than man. Than man. And we are to stand for the truth of God's word, whether or not it is popular. If you are within earshot of my voice right now and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. you are not even on the path of following God. Mm -hmm. I am here today to say that you can do that right now. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the God is right here. He is waiting. Christ has already done all the hard work. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, accept him in your heart, and yes. he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness yes. and bring you into the kingdom yes. of the Lord. And yes. that is what we want to do. You don't need to die to get to his kingdom. Thy kingdom come on earth. His kingdom will come into your heart and will mm -hmm. reign and he will set up precedence in your heart. So we say today, give him your hand and let him lead you into the path of righteousness. I'm going to ask you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, to repeat this prayer with me. Father, Father in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I come. I come. I confess my sins before you. I confess my sins Lord, before you. I accept yes. Jesus Christ. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Wash me. Take away all my sins. Take away all my sins. All my transgressions. All my transgressions. Take away this heavy burden. This heavy burden. And give me your peace. Give me your peace. Give me your joy. Give me your joy. Give me your hope. 
Give me, your give me faith. Give me, faith. give me the fruit of the spirit the and take spirit. away this heavy yoke. Away this heavy I, receive yoke. Now, I receive you now, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. I receive you I receive as, the as the atonement sacrifice, sacrifice for my sin. For my sins. Now, I walk into the newness of life this day as I give you full control of my life. In Jesus' name. If you have repeated that prayer, you are saved and we celebrate with you. Go ahead and subscribe, like this ministry, stay tuned with the teaching, continue to be a part of us as we continue to share God. One thing we promise and commit as people of God that we will always bring the undiluted word of God to you every time. That's our, per- that's our commitment as a ministry. And so I pray that God will rest with you and you will experience his joy and his peace this week. Amen. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, now rest, remain, and abide with you all, both now until Jesus Christ appear. Everybody say amen. amen. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. God bless you. Glory to God. Go in God peace and in grace. Thank you. God Have bless your heart. Week.